So praise the Lord Jesus Christ concerning about the doctrine of dispensationalism. For people who don't know what that is, it's rightly dividing the verses to the right group of people and right time period. That is so important because a lot of people, they look at Bible verses that seems like they can lose their salvation or that there are verses where it shows you have to do works for salvation. But the simple answer to that is we rightly divide, see that? Those verses to the right time period as well as the right group of people. So we see right here, this is Old Testament Jews, faith and works. And then other verses where you find faith and works, it's going to most likely be aimed toward the tribulation. And again, the people are Jews. So if you do not understand this teaching, I'm not going to teach it right here. Please watch Intermediate Discipleship number three and number four with its homework assignment. If you watch that, then you're going to understand. What I'm doing right here is I'm going to address the critics on this important doctrine of dispensational salvations. Now you might wonder why in the world would people attack dispensational salvations? Because this doctrine has rescued us from a lot of wrong doctrine. Yep. This made us believe that Christians are truly saved by faith, not by works. We know that for a fact because verses that show faith and works for salvation or losing your salvation will be in these time periods, not us today in the church age. Old Testament, Jesus died on the cross. We're under the church age, under the New Testament, and here's the tribulation that's different. Okay, so then here are some of the uh, criticisms that they will use against dispensational salvations. They're going to insist Romans chapter 2 is hypothetical once more. So their argument to this, now, Watch my video, Satan lied about Old Testament salvation. And then you can also watch again the second video, Satan lied again about Old Testament salvation. So I will put those video links underneath this video. And guess what? Satan lied thrice here about Old Testament salvation. And let's address this third lie that they're going to do. So Romans chapter 2, they insist that this salvation is hypothetical. Now, no, that's not true. We argued at Romans chapter 2 that this salvation is following the law by conscience. That's how Old Testament saints were saved that time. They were saved by the law of conscience, not faith alone. Romans 2 plainly showed that, and I showed you in the other videos. But they're going to insist that this is hypothetical because what they're going to insist is that they're going to read verse 17 all the way through 21. If you read 17 through 21, but let's give them, I want to give the enemies as much as of an advantage as possible. After all, they spend an hour per a few minute video clip on me. I'll give them more of an advantage and show them, as a matter of fact, that Bible believing truth, dispensationalism, the word of God will always trump them. And they can nitpick every sentence that I say. And these people are incredible losers that they're going to nitpick every single line that I say, critique it, and as long as they have the last word, then they can win. But that's a pitiful way of winning because that's like literally me tying my hands behind my back. Every time I give an argument, then that means I'm giving the enemy right here. Every time I give an argument, then the enemy can interrupt every time that I argue to you right here. Yeah. And every time they interrupt my argument right here, then they want the last say as well. Then they'll let me continue on with my argument. Uh -huh. By doing that, that's not how you seek truth. Uh -huh. Obviously, the opponent will look like the one who's right. That's so obvious. Like I'm teaching to you right now, what if someone interrupted me every time, critiqued it, and then I just moved on to the next topic? Yeah. He had the last say. See, this is not how you seek truth. How do you seek truth? Look at the scriptures and what you're going to really notice between me and those enemies of dispensational salvations is that I'm reading I keep emphasizing so much I'm reading the verse as it says I'm looking at the context and scripture with scripture and I'm going at a pattern you will notice clear as day from these enemies pay attention please pay attention how they insert their interpretation when they read a verse and see if their interpretation is in that verse. You got to do that 
See if what they say follows that pattern in the verse by context exactly as the word says and scripture with scripture. I've done that all the time to you. Okay, so let's do this. I'm going to give them the advantage right here. So let's say right here, Romans 2, the whole chapter, it shows that these people cannot keep the law. That's what it shows. And Romans chapter 3, let's give them Romans 3. Look at verse 21. Verse 21. This is how they argue. They're going to also use Romans 3.21. But now the righteousness of God without the law. Now, you might remember in my previous teaching, again, I'm not going to repeat it again. Watch the video. Satan lied again on Old Testament salvation. I argue to you Romans 3.21 is a timeline. There's a timeline. Now Jesus Christ manifests his righteousness. But what they're going to argue right here is, no, verse 21 is, has nothing to do with a timeline change of Jesus Christ's righteousness. No, it's just a summation, like verse 19. That's their verse. Look at verse 19. Now we know. See that? That matches with verse 20 now, 21. But now, see that? So it's like a summation of the argument. So now does not literally mean now the timeline. They're just simply saying, here's the summation of the argument now. That's how they interpret it as. Okay, so verse 19, now we know that what, so, uh, what things soever the law saith, they saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. So they're going to argue right here that again, that in these two passages, it shows that the law could not save. See that? Law couldn't save. So when Romans chapter 2 talks about keeping the law for salvation, it was truly hypothetical. Because if you look at the rest of chapter 2 and you look at these two verses, it sums up the whole argument. Basically, you can keep the law for your salvation, but in reality at the end when we sum up everything, the law couldn't save you. So that's their interpretation. That's how they get around it. Okay, this is easily debunked by, let's look at these passages right here. First of all, verse 21, how do we know that's a timeline? You know why that's a timeline? Look at verse 26. Verse 26. It's undoubtedly a timeline. In fact, the Bible will have to say time so that you get it, okay? To declare, I say, at what? This time his righteousness. Verse 20, remember verse 21? But now the righteousness of God. That's a timeline. Shall we move on? Okay, let's, let's move on. So now let's look at Galatians chapter 3, okay? Galatians 3. Galatians 3. Remember my previous video? Again, the previous video. Satan lied again. Old Testament salvation. What did I argue? These people, they don't get it through their heads. And it's like I'm going to have to repeat this over and over again so that some of you can practically memorize this pretty much. All right. You want me to repeat this again? Galatians 3 is undoubtedly repeating Romans 2 and Romans 3. What's it showing right here? It's showing right here that the law couldn't save. Yes, we admit that. But you got to understand this, the law couldn't save, which is why we have to wait for Jesus to die on the cross. Because you cannot get salvation by grace without Jesus' death. Jesus died right here. So during this whole Old Testament, what could they do? See, they couldn't be saved by faith until Jesus died on the cross. So what they had to do was wait for Jesus' death. So, okay, the law couldn't save. That's why they have to wait for Jesus' death to save them. But, but, let me repeat again, they had no choice right here. They had no choice that time because Jesus didn't die yet. So what did they have to go? They have to go through an incomplete, so it's like I have to write this down so that you can get it, okay? It's an incomplete or a temporary salvation where they had to go under the law. The law couldn't save, but they had no choice that time because Jesus didn't die yet. So they had no choice but to go by the law. But guess what? The law couldn't save them. 
truly. So they have to wait till Jesus died on the cross to truly save them. That's the idea. Now, they're going to insist right here, they're going to insist right here that, no, this is just bogus right here. This is just nonsense, this kind of interpretation. No, look at Galatians 3 again. Look, they're not reading. 21, is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid, for if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. See, Paul recognizes the law couldn't save. But look at this, they have to wait till Jesus' death. See this pattern? The next one, verse 23. But before faith came, see that? Verse 22, faith of Jesus Christ, right? Before that faith came where he died on the cross, we were what? Kept under the law, shut up unto the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Verse 24, wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. Yes, because he died, because he died. See, based on when he died, that's why we see right here that the law shows us that, hey, our works is insufficient compared to Christ's work. That's why you need to turn to this. See that? But before then, they had no choice. Now look at verse 25. But after that faith is come, oh, we are no longer under a what? Schoolmaster. Who's that schoolmaster at verse 24? The law. Okay, remember, see, after that faith has come, see that? Until he died, until he died, can I repeat 20 more times here? Until he died, until he died, then the law, see? Then the law doesn't count. But before faith came, before he died, we had no choice but to be shut up unto the law. Now, they always insert interpretation. They inserted their interpretation that, oh no, it's be well, that's pretty obvious, because we are under the law, that's why we couldn't have access to faith. So because we were under the law and then the law made us guilty that we're all sinners, that's why we get saved by faith after that. So if we're, we remain under the law where we're guilty of our sins, then obviously we're shut up unto our faith. You see this kind of, look at this verse right here. That's not what it says. It's a timeline. Before faith came, we were kept under the law. That's a timeline here. Before faith in Christ came, we were kept under the law. Now, if you want to insinuate that, no, we were, you know, what it means right here is as long as you're in the law, that's why you're shut up unto the faith. You know, it's very funny. You know, I notice that these people, now they're trembling when they're arguing these verses. I wonder if you sincerely prayed and studied the scriptures before you gave the interpretation. I know I did. So before you get on me that I'm a heretic and that I'm a dangerous person, you people better check your hearts and see if you sincerely pray to God and said, if I'm wrong, Lord, please show me that I'm wrong because I did the same thing too every single time, including this teaching. Amen. And I sincerely prayed to the Lord and surrendered myself to the judgment seat of Christ. Can you guys do that? Or you just shut off your mouth. Oh, I'm sorry. You have a habit of doing so out of the past hundreds of videos criticizing Bible believers, you like to use this fork wicked tongue that's bound for hell according to James rather than praying to the Lord before you shoot off your mouth. Okay, anyways, let's argue here that this is a timeline. You know why? Because it says right here, before faith came, we were what? Kept under the law. You know what that means? We were kept under we had no choice. We were under the law that time. That proves right here that this is talking about that we were under the Old Testament law during that time because we had no choice. What do you mean that this is talking about, well, you know, we're all judged by the law. That's why we have no access to faith. Obviously, if you're still in there, that's why you need faith. Then if that's the case, why would the law keep us there? See, there's your problem right there. Are you telling me then that like right now, because um, I'm judged by the law, that's why uh, I can't get access to faith. Unless I reject the law, then I can receive access to faith. How can I reject that law if I'm kept under it? See, there is your problem right here. This is a mental issue where you're not reading the verse as it says. I read it, kept under the law. 
before faith came. That's a timeline. Now, look, if they want to, in, if, if they want to interpret five different ways for this one verse, let's look at the verses right here. Let's look at the verses. Let the scripture prevail, shall we? Look at verse 8. And the scripture, what? Foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through what? Now, do you think that this faith now is a timeline? Yes, because God's saying in the future, you're going to have access to this. This is a timeline right here. What are you talking about? This has to do with the timeline. Now, let's keep reading right here. Uh, let's look at verse 12. Verse 12. And the law is not what? Oh, this is a problem right here. See that? The law is not a faith right here. This is not faith, this timeline. See that right there? This is not faith. This is under the law right here. Now, let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. Verse 13. Christ hath redeemed us from the what? Curse of the law being made a curse for us. Wait a minute. That means weren't they under the curse of the law that time? So they were bound to this. See, they had no choice. And Jesus Christ had to deliver them from that. This is undoubtedly a timeline here. Now let's keep reading. Verse 14, that the blessing of Abraham might come on, look at this, the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. See, this is a future timeline where Paul was ministering to Gentiles giving them the salvation by faith. Wow, isn't this amazing? Now, here's another one. Let's look at Exodus chapter 14, verse 31. Exodus chapter 14, verse 31. Then the next passage, we're going to go to Deuteronomy 32. Let's look at Exodus 14, and then we're going to look at Deuteronomy 32. Exodus 14 and Deuteronomy 32. Now, you know what's sorely disappointing? What's sorely disappointing is that Remember I argued about Noah's salvation? Because he's in the Old Testament, his was faith and works. You know what I found? What I found is when they tried to argue against that, it was horrible. They have no scriptural proof. All they inserted was their interpretation. Noah was saved, that's why he was just, and he walked towards his generations before God. I already debunked that as Satan lied again Old Testament salvation. This shows, see, that these people, that they're running out of their own imaginative interpretations. You know why? If you go by your own imaginative interpretation, you're going to run out of ideas. But if you go by the scriptures, it will always go endless and stand and prevail. That's what it's going to do. So I don't have to argue. That was so pitiful. Any person who watches that and compare my video with the other videos out there who try to argue about Noah's salvation should obviously see it. If you don't, then you're a pattern that does not go by scripture, looking at the scripture, but just watching and hearing. And when you do that, then obviously, if I keep talking and someone keeps interrupting my teaching right now and has the last say, obviously, they look like the winner. So I'm going to give them that kind of advantage so that the Lord can deal with your hearts and see if you're reading the scriptures. Good. Okay, so let's do this. Not only that, I only have to do it a couple minutes. These people will spend nearly one hour per one video. I just get off of one week and look what happens. I don't have to sweat it out. These kind of arguments, I only looked it up in one hour through prayer and studying the scriptures. You know what wasted my time? What wasted my time was watching all the enemy's videos out there. That's what wasted my time. I gave them the advantage, all the benefit of the doubt, gave them all the hours. This is ridiculous, man. Okay, now let's look at this passage right here. So what they're going to criticize me is that they're going to criticize me, one, that I was backtracking about Noah believing in the flood. He just renounced it. He just renounced it. Again, if you watch my previous video, Satan lied again, Old Testament salvation. I argued here that Noah, when he believed concerning the flood and had to build an ark, that part right there of his work was one of it. His whole life had to consist of faith and works. That's just one of it. That's what I was arguing. What do you mean this disproves the argument? It just only proved the argument of Genesis 6, that his life consisted of faith and works. Now, here's the point right here. That is something that they specifically believed in, but if their works 
did not show that belief, then that problem is, is that their belief and faith is not genuine. So here's the problem here. The problem then is, back at my first video, which they didn't comprehend, Satan lies, Old Testament salvation. If you insist they believed, and that was their salvation, what did they believe in? What I'm arguing right here is that what they believed in, their works will show it. That's why you can't deny faith and works right there. Because, oh, no, 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 no. It was what they believed, not the works that showed it. Then back at video number one, what if they didn't show the work then? Then their faith is not genuine. Oh, no, 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 no. There are people who actually failed in their work. So what are you going to say about that? Uh, look at Exodus 14, verse 31. Look at right here. And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians, and the people feared the Lord and what? Believed the Lord. Okay. They believed in God for salvation. I admit that. That's Old Testament salvation. But here's the thing. Their works have to show it. That's the point. If you don't have the work that shows it, then that belief is not genuine. That is putting work in there whether you like it or not no matter how you word it around. Because look at Deuteronomy 32, verse 15. Deuteronomy 32, verse 15. Oh, no, no. I mean, uh, what if their works failed? I mean, they'll still be saved. Uh, look at Deuteronomy 32, verse 15. But Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked. Thou art waxen fat. Thou art grown thick. Thou art covered with fatness. Then look at this. He forsook God which made him and lightly esteemed the rock of his what? Salvation. Salvation. Look at this. So they rejected the God of their salvation right here. Here's the idea. When they believe their works have to keep showing it right here. Verse 16, they provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God. To God whom they knew not. To new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. Verse 20. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very froward generation. Children in what? Whom is no faith? See, those works at 15 through 19 were necessary for Old Testament salvation. Well, this has nothing to do with burning in hell, uh, verse 22. For a fire is kindled in mine anger and shall burn unto the lowest what? Stop saying physical death. It's all physical death, physical death. You know what you want every time that we're going to pull up life, hell, and perdition or something like that? You're going to insert your interpretation. It's like you don't want to read the verse as it says. That's something very dishonest. What if you did that with all of Paul's epistles every time he said life and hell and perdition? What are you going to do with that? See, you can't pick and choose. You're being very biased right here. Okay. Now, ex uh, explaining all of that, one of their most pitiful arguments, which is not really a good argument, but uh, I'll mention it more in the other video, okay? But I'll just make this brief. One of the ar other arguments they're going to use is they're going to use Adam and Eve because... They were saved by the blood of the lamb. They received sheepskins at Genesis 3. Abel, he offered a lamb for his sacrifice, not like Cain who did works of fruits and vegetables. They're going to pull up John 13 where Jesus told the disciples they were already clean. So see, they didn't have to do works. They're already saved. Enoch, he got raptured to heaven. See that? So it shows right here that there were no works involved. Lot, his was especially a bad testimony because he committed incest. So they're going to use all of that. The simple argument to that was something you should have watched a long time ago that I repeated over and over again. Watch Intermediate Discipleship number four. That will convince you that there is one indisputable argument in dispensationalism that you really need. Those are called exceptions. If you deny exceptions, I guarantee you this, you're gonna fall into wrong doctrine. If you don't believe in, uh, if you don't believe in exceptions, you will fall across into either a hyper form of dispensationalism or a weaker form of dispensationalism. Transitions and exceptions are clearly undoubtable. I don't have to explain all that. Just watch the video. It'll explain convincingly. Unless you give a legitimate argument that I feel like is a good argument, then I'll address that. But it was already addressed in my intermediate discipleship number four video.